Hello, so today we are taking a look at the Zenith CH701 in Microsoft Flight Simulator. It's been released by Simworks Studios, if we go and have a quick look at their website, you can see it's at a massive discount at the moment, so it would normally be €24.99 and it's down to €2.49, so 10% of its normal price. Uh, we are going to be looking at, it, looking at it at the boundless Alderney scenery which is £7.99 or just over €9, Euros, uh, nearly $10. So the Alderney scenery is very very good as well, I've done a previous video on it so we'll have a look at that at the same time. So if we just minimise that out of the way, so here is the, um, the CH701. So if we go and have a pan around it, in common with lots of other Simworks Studios aircraft, the, the quality of the rendering is absolutely stunning. So the material modelling of the body of the aircraft is just amazing. So it's an interesting plane, it's like a lightweight um, extreme short takeoff landing aircraft. You can see it's got fixed leading edge slats and then it's got these enormous um, flapperons I guess you would call them, ailerons and flaps built into the same surface. So then if we go further around the aircraft can see everything's been modelled really nicely. It's very a very basic looking aeroplane, it's very boxy so it's probably not too difficult to to do the various curves but they've done a really nice job with it. Okay so if we just scoot around the plane and come into the cockpit and have a look if I can fly the drone camera in here. So the instruments are all really nicely modelled so if we zoom in a little bit, you can see, again, the material modelling inside the aircraft is very, very good as well. Kind of what you come to expect from the developers these days, so this is as good as anything else really. Okay, so if we cut away from the drone camera, and we're actually at pilot eye view now. So let's go and close the canopy, and we'll take it for a fly. So it's going to be a surprise, because it's very very easy to operate it has to be said interestingly in the cold and dark state that it loads in the radio switch is on i don't know if that's a mistake or not so i'm going to turn that off turn the master switch on because everything i've always learned is that you start the engine before you switch any radio kit on otherwise you could um put a surge through stuff or you know cause the breakers to pop out anyway so we go and set the fuel to uh, to both so it's very very simple to configure in the cockpit and then just crack the throttle open a little bit make sure the parking brakes are on and turn the engine over and it turns over immediately we didn't need the fuel pump so pull the engine back to idle and it idles at about 1200 ish 1250 uh, rpm there is no propeller control Okay, so we can now go and turn on the radios, turn on the instrument lights, uh, turn on the navigation lights. We should have probably had the navigation lights on first. It doesn't have a beacon light, but I guess we're in a simulator. Those guys are stood over there waiting for me to start it up, so it's not quite like the real world. Uh, again, we didn't need to use a fuel pump, so there we go. Uh, we'll go and put the landing lights on anyway. Go and turn the transponder on. I don't think the, the landing lights are really up to much if we go and have a look around outside the aircraft. Uh, it's this tiny little light underneath the propeller, so yeah, it really doesn't do much. I don't think you'd expect to operate this at night anyway. Okay, so we are essentially ready to go. We're just waiting for the satellites to acquire Well, we're sitting with it on the ground here. You can see it's got these enormous balloon tyres and it does tend to sag around on them. But well, we're just going to correct the flaps while we're here. So, if we open the engine up while we're on the wheel brakes. You can see, as soon as we cut the engine, you can actually see the front tyre sagging just with the, the idle draft from the propeller. It's quite interesting. Okay, so off the parking brake and there's positive thrust at idle, so you do need to be careful with that. 
Okay, so we're just going to roll out. And keep dabbing the brakes. <laughs> so you can see the wind is coming down runway 08 at Alderney. It's quite a strong wind, it's about 15 knots today. So we can have some fun looking at a crosswind landing as well after having a play with the aeroplane. So I'm having to hold a considerable amount of rudder just to stop it weathercocking on the way into the runway. Okay, well, this is where this gets funny. So we're not going to use flaps, we don't need them. Going to go 50% throttle and ease back on the throttle. Look at the speed, so 50 knots there. And we were in the air. You can pull back at 40 knots quite safely. So it's just gone through 60 knots, it's very powerful. You might say it's massively too powerful for the airframe. Because literally, if we go full throttle, we can climb basically at 45 degrees and hold our speed at around about 60 knots. Obviously, we're not going to do that. So if we pull it back to idle, we can have some fun with exploring the rocks around the area or the cliffs. Now the wind is coming from the other end of the island so it's going to maybe be some turbulence around here. Maybe not too bad. But we can play all sorts of games with... Well, we're going downwind so we need to be careful. We may lose some control authority. Going not much faster than the wind. I think it's 15 knots, so you have to kind of figure that in your head about ground speed and wind speed and not attempt a downwind landing, not in this one anyway. So you can see you can go incredibly slowly, so if you do want to go flying around somewhere where there's very good modelling, it's the best way to go and have a, a low slow flight, because so you can literally fly along almost on idle. Some clever stuff, isn't it? And if we did want to go up this cliff here, it just makes mincemeat of these kind of manoeuvres. So we're coming round into the wind. We'll crab across the airfield. Look at the turbulence, it's quite stunning, isn't it? So then, should we do a crosswind approach? These kind of aeroplanes are great fun for this, for learning techniques as well. So if we were to use um, the side slip technique to stay straight with the runway, so we're going to come into crosswind here. So yeah, so we're aiming into the wind to maintain runway direction. So what we could do is pull the aeroplane round to point to the direction we're going and then hold left wing down. Look at it trying to lift. I'm going to sit up in the seat. So we're, main we're doing a side slip basically along the runway, keeping the aeroplane aligned along the runway. We just come over the tarmac before we touch a wheel and then pull back up again. So it's great fun in these kind of aeroplanes for learning the coordination for those kind of manoeuvres. So we'll let go of the rudder and we're back flying. Crabbing across the wind again. So yeah, it's you can see I'm just about 20% throttle and it's easily climbing out towards 60 knots and it's brilliant fun to fly around in. It's very difficult to get into trouble. Having said that, if you do drop a wing, it's much more, this is gonna sound counterintuitive, it's much more likely to get into trouble when you are using the flaps because the operating window of the wing is reduced. 
But having said that, with full flaps you can come in at 30 knots. It, it's absolutely insane. I'm not going to attempt that today because it's too windy. And look at it being thrown around by turbulence. It's <laughs> quite amusing. Obviously there's full height glass on the sides, so for sightseeing it's absolutely brilliant fun. It's a shame they haven't modelled all the buildings, isn't it? I guess they have to make a decision on frame rates, you know, just how much they are going to try to model. Okay, let's go back to the airfield then and we'll go in over runway 08 and loop in for a, a very slow landing into the wind. I mean, we could almost land on the taxiway. We won't. We'll be well behaved. Or we could land this end of the, um, the grass, I guess, if we did a crosswind landing. The flaps have the uh, safety mechanism built into them. I'm not sure if it's just been modelled in the aircraft to do it or if it's actually a feature of the aeroplane that if you accelerate too hard or f you know try to fly too fast with the flaps down, uh, they will retract all on their own. So that may just be a, an air pressure mechanism that you know forces the flaps back up so they don't damage themselves. You can see we're coming into the wind obviously so let's go for the flaps see look the safety mechanism's kicking in it won't let me drop the flaps so we'll level up we're going into the wind remember a very strong wind okay here comes the flaps this is insane isn't it I've had to increase throttle enormously there to hold the aeroplane on full flaps. So flaps back up. And let's go taxi off the runway. This is probably going to go rolling down here and barreling into the taxi way. gaining momentum as we roll. So we're going park up back round by the hangar. So I think this is a fantastic fun plane for going sightseeing and obviously if you like bush flying it's very very good and the flight model seems to be very good. Obviously not having flown a real bush plane I can't comment. There's probably very few people that can but it seems to be great fun. Okay, parking brake back on. Turn the magnetos off. Engines off. And we're going to turn the electrics off. So. And there we go. And fuel shut off. So the wind is turning the propeller. That's quite amusing, isn't it? You can see how strong the wind is, like buffeting the wings. It's a day to be tying the aeroplane down, really. But it was nice to see an aeroplane like this deal with those sort of wind conditions as well. Anyway, so that's the Zenith CH701 from SimWorks Studios in Microsoft Flight Simulator. And it costs two pounds, or sorry, two euros 49. So it's less than the price of a cup of coffee from somewhere like Starbucks. So it's a bit of a no brainer, really. So go on over there, go and buy it. Okay, I'll see you again soon.